am Mufasa, and I'm going to tell you a story called The Brightest Star. You can read along with me in your book. When it is time to turn the page, you will hear this sound. Let us begin. One cold winter's eve, Simba and I were together on Pride Rock, gazing at the stars. Dad, look at that one. It's bigger and brighter than all the rest. That star, Simba, is the spirit of your great-grandfather. The king who ruled before grandfather? That's right. Really? How does spirit become a star? Listen, and I will tell you the story. A long, long time ago, when your great-grandfather was king of the Pride Lands, there was a terrible drought. There hadn't been any rain for months. The water hole was the size of a big puddle, and the sweet green grass that the animals ate was gone. Everyone was suffering. Great-grandfather Mohatu, being a very wise king, made a law about how much water each animal could drink. He also said that lions should go to the water hole last, since we could go for days without drinking it. This new law went into effect, and all the animals were surviving. Then one day, a terrible thing happened. A selfish, lazy lion sat at the tiny water hole, drinking and drinking and drinking. Many thirsty animals stood in the distance, waiting for him to finish. He knew they were there, but still, he took his time, drinking more than his share. Finally, a very brave gazelle approached him. Excuse me, most magnificent lion, but may I get a drink? The angry lion lunged at him, and all the animals who were watching turned and fled. When great-grandfather Mohatu heard this news, he was outraged. How can we all survive this drought if even my own kind won't cooperate? He knew something more drastic had to be done, but he wasn't sure what. Meanwhile, the water hole was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That evening, King Mohatu called all the animals of the Pride Lands together. I am going on a long journey to find the answer to our problem. I will return as soon as I have the solution. Grandfather Mohatu walked for many miles. He crossed the plains, went over the mountains, and through the forest. He saw the land change from dusty brown to lush green, and he could smell moisture in the air. Finally, he came to a deep, clear blue river. After drinking from the river, he stretched out in the shade to rest. That's when he heard someone crying. Curious, great grandfather Mohatu went to see who it was. In the reeds, there was an enormous green crocodile, crying crocodile tears. Great grandfather Mohatu called out to him. Oh, great scaly one, why are you crying? Slowly. The crocodile swam toward the riverbank. As he got closer, great grandfather Mohatu could see that this crocodile was truly the largest, most frightening crocodile he had ever seen. And if great grandfather hadn't been the fearless king that he was, he would have been terrified of this magnificent reptile. But the poor crocodile's eyes were red from crying. And when he got to the riverbank, he was still sobbing. <laughs> you are a kind lion to ask. I'm crying because I'm lonely and I don't have any friends. Everyone is afraid of me, so no one comes to the river. <laughs> King Mohatu studied the crocodile. Have you given the other animals reason to fear you? Crocodile looked ashamed. Yes, one time I bit Hippo's tail. Then it's no wonder they're afraid. You must earn their trust again. But how can I do that if they won't come to the river? 
you brought to me. I am a hot tool, king of the pride. Line. As King Mohatu was leading the river, he bumped into a hippopotamus coming through the tall grass. Excuse me, big hippo, but why aren't you wallowing in the river? Crocodile lives in the river, and I am afraid of him. Mohatu nodded, then continued on until he came to a wildebeest. Great grandfather Mohatu spoke gently to him. Dear friend wildebeest, why don't you drink from the river? Will the beast trembled before King Mohatu. Oh, good lion. To get to the river, I have to pass by Hippo. And I'm afraid of her. Mohatu thought to himself. Yes. Big Hippo would surely frighten poor Wildebeest. He continued on. Soon, he came upon a zebra grazing in the grass. Zebra? What is your reason for not going to the river? Zebra looked around nervously. Not all lions are as gentle or wise as you, so I hide from them among the wildebeests. But if the wildebeests won't go to the river, then I won't go either. Great grandfather thought to himself, My animals have the same fears as the animals I've just met. They all need to trust one another so that they can use the great river. King Mohatu knew that he now had the answer to his problem. So he began his long journey home, through the forest and over the mountains. When he got to the plains, the animals of the Pride Lands hurried out to meet him. What did you find out, King Mohatu? I have found a great river from which we can all drink. A cheer went up from the crowd. The animals jumped up and down. Where is it? Where is it? It is many miles away, across the plains, over the mountains, and through the forest. In order for us all to get there safely, we must have cooperation from everybody. As we travel, no one may harm any other animal. That is the only way we'll survive this difficult drought. A zebra was the first to speak up. Begging your pardon, King, but we couldn't get everyone to follow the last law, and it was one of your own kind who broke it. How do we know it will work this time? I can't trust lions, so I won't go to this great river without the protection of the wildebeests. Wildebeest snorted through his nose. <laughs> Brother Zebra, you won't get me to go. No, I don't trust the hippos who live near the rivers. A hippopotamus stomped his heavy hoof. It is not I you should fear, but the crocodile who lives in the river. He will snap off your snout and have you for dinner. Great grandfather tried to explain about the crocodile who lives in the great river. But there was such an uproar that he had to shout, Silence! Again, Zebra spoke up. Now that we know where the great river is, I say it's every animal for himself. Whoever gets there first drinks as much as he wants. The last one to get there won't get a drop. And Zebra took off at a gallop. What happened next was such a sight to see that great grandfather Mohatu never forgot it. All the animals, large and small, fierce and meek, took off across the Pride Lands to be the first to get to the Great River. There was pushing, shoving, tripping, and stumbling, and the thunder of hooves shook the sky. First, Zebra was ahead, then Giraffe, then Zebra again, across the plains, over the mountains, and through the forest they went. Then all of a sudden, from way in the back, Cheetah shot forward with a burst of speed. And he zipped past both giraffe and zebra as if they were walking. But even though Cheetah can run like lightning, he can't keep it up for long. And soon Zebra was gaining on Cheetah. Now Zebra had a mean streak. And when he caught up to Cheetah, he kicked him in the chest, flattening him to the ground. All the animals behind Cheetah ran over him on their way to the great river. 
naturally, Zebra was the first to reach the river. As his hooves sank into the cool mud, he couldn't stop drinking in the clear blue water. But for some reason, he kept having to pick up his feet. And each time he put them back down, they went deeper into the mud. Something was wrong. He realized what was happening just as the other animals arrived. Stay back! I'm sinking in quicksand! Giraffe stopped herself just in time. She quickly grabbed onto Zebra's tail and tugged, but with no result. Then all the animals formed a chain and pulled. But Zebra was already in too deep. He cried out mournfully. Help me! Someone help me, please! But no one could help. They watched poor Zebra sink deeper and deeper into the mud. Finally, Great Grandfather arrived, carrying Cheetah on his back. The animals pleaded. Help him, King Mahatu! Help him! But there was nothing he could do. Zebra was now up to his knees in the muck. Suddenly, Great Grandfather Mohatu had an idea. He called out in his most powerful voice. Oh, great scaly one. Come to the riverbank where the quicksand is. The animals looked this way and that. Who was King Mohatu calling? There was no answer, so Great Grandfather called out again. Oh, great scaly one. It is your friend, King Mohatu. Slowly, the meanest looking crocodile anyone had ever seen glided out of the reeds. Everyone on the riverbank shrank back. Zebra's eyes widened in fear, and he thrashed about, struggling to get away. The crocodile stopped just a few feet from Zebra and opened his big, wide mouth. His pointed teeth glistened in the sun. Oh, what is it that you want, King Mohatu? As you see, Zebra is sinking in quicksand. He will die if he doesn't get help. Can you do something? Crocodile swam a little closer and examined the situation. Mm, yes, I think I can help Zebra. Crocodile swam to the riverbank and with his muscular legs planted himself firmly on solid ground. Then he gave Zebra his tail to climb onto and with all his might he pulled Zebra out of the mud. Zebra pranced up and down the riverbank. Oh, thank you, Crocodile. Thank you for saving my life. Crocodile smiled. <laughs> you are welcome. Then Zebra turned to go, but King Mohatu stepped in front of him. Just a moment, Zebra. I believe you owe Cheetah an apology for kicking him. And you should see that he gets safely home, too. Zebra blushed and turned toward Cheetah. I'm truly sorry, Cheetah. I never should have kicked you. I forgive you, Zebra. Then Cheetah drank from the river and climbed onto Zebra's back to go home. All the other animals, careful to avoid the quicksand, also drank from the river. As they turned to go, they called out, Thank you, friend Crocodile! From that day forward, all the animals of the Pride Lands journeyed to the Great River. And Crocodile was always very kind to them. For you see, he would never hurt his friends. Then at last, rain came to the Pride Lands. The water hole got bigger and bigger, and the sweet green grass grew high. Finally, it was no longer necessary to go all the way to the Great River to drink. But King Mohatu never forgot a friend. He went to visit Crocodile from time to time, and would also see Hippo in the water, and Wildebeest, and Zebra at the riverbank. Grandfather Mohatu ruled over the Pride Lands for many years, and everything was good. But he grew very old, and when cold winters eve, 
his time came to an end. All the animals, near and far, wept for days. They felt lost without their king, and many of them started fighting again. Then, a mysterious thing happened. Just when it seemed to the animals that without King Wohato to guide them, their time of peace was over, a star appeared in the sky that no one had ever seen before. A star bigger and brighter than all the rest. It filled the animals with feelings of peace and harmony. And they felt as they had right after Crocodile saved the zebra. And everyone got a drink from the great river. Simba, they knew that star was the spirit of their king, your great-grandfather, the wisest and most loving ruler who ever lived. Dad, I wish great-grandfather was still here. But he is Simba. He is with us in spirit. And that is why his star appears. To remind us to respect and love one another, no matter how different we may be. Now, you better go say goodnight to your mother. It's getting past your bedtime. Okay, Dad. Simba gazed up at the star one last time. Good night, great grandfather. I hope I grow up to be just like you. <laughs> I smiled proudly at my son, and we headed down Pride Rock.